Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is find element occurring once when all other are present thrice, right? And it is a medium level problem. So they have themselves given away the problem in the title itself that we have been given an array of size n and we have to find out the one element which appears exactly once and all the other elements will be appearing thrice right so all the other elements will be appearing three times and one of the elements is appearing one time you can clearly see in this particular case one is occurring three times one two and three and then 10 is occurring once so the answer is 10. similarly here also uh, we have 34 occurring uh, three times and we have two occurring three times and we have one occurring three times and then we have three which is single and alone so we have three here right so let us discuss an interesting approach to this particular problem so we are going to solve this problem using bit manipulation so we are, we are going to use bit manipulation how are we going to use that so let me just write it first bit manipulation so the idea is very very simple uh, let's say let's say if it was not numbers but uh, let's say it was some objects right so now you you are saying that some objects will, will be present thrice and some objects will be present once right so you will always observe that the frequency of these objects which are present thrice will be divisible by 3 so the frequency of a will always be equal to 0 right like this if I take the frequency of A and take its mod with 3, it is going to be 0. This is what I am trying to say. Right. Now, we apply the same concept to bits. Why? Because each value, let us say A of i, is going to contribute some bits. Right. And if I take those bits, I will realize that this particular element, let us say A i, is contributing bit number 0 and bit number 1 and bit number 2 and bit number 3. Right. These are the bits that it is contributing. Then in the final frequency array, its frequency will be 3, its frequency will be 3, then 3 and then 3. Right. So all the bits that are being contributed by A of i are going to get incremented by a factor of 3. Right. Similarly goes for other numbers A of j which is also present 3 times. But the number which is present only one time will only get this particular bit incremented once. Right. So, let me explain to you this more clearly. Let us say I have a frequency array. So, this frequency array is basically going to store the bits. Right. So, let us say I have this. Right. So, let us say this is the 0th bit, this is the 1st bit, 2nd bit, 3rd bit, 4th bit, 5th bit and 6th bit. So, let us take some example from here only. We have 1, 1, 1 and 10. So, if I write 1, in binary form, it is 1 only. If I write 10 in binary form, uh, what it should be? So, let us say this is this is 0th bit, 1st bit, 2nd bit and 3rd bit. So, I believe it can be written as, so if you write this 10 to 5, then we have 1 here. We have 2, 2, so I am using the old method. We have 0 actually 1 here and then 0 into 1010. 1010. Zero, one zero. One zero, one zero. Let us verify it worked. Does it is it correct? Yes. So 2 raised to the power 3 is 10, and then 2 raised to the power so this bit is going to contribute 8 and this is going to contribute 2. So this is 8 plus 2, 10. So yes. So this is correct. So basically, 10 will be written like this. Now, if I have been given an array like this, 1, 10, 10, and 10. Right. Now, what I need to do, I just need to traverse to the array. And I just need to add the frequency of all of these bits, right? So this particular one will only contribute one, and let's say this is this gets added here, right? Now this particular ten is going to contribute bit one and bit three, right? These are the two values. So bit one is going to get increased by one, and bit three is going to get increased by one. When I encounter this particular ten, now I move on to the next ten. So this particular ten again bit one and bit three. So this is going to be two now, and this is going to be two now as well. Right. Now, now I move on to the third 10. Now these two positions, these two positions will now have 3 here. So this is going to be 3 here. Right. Now after I have completed all the traversal, I am just going to go through this particular array and find out what are all the elements which are not divisible by 3. Right. Why not divisible by 3? Because 
these elements which are divisible by 3 would have been contributed by elements which were present in the multiples of 3 right and which we don't want and this is the only element which appears to be single right that is why we are going to take this particular value now let us take one more example so that you understand it better let's say we have 8 8 8 and then we have 5 and then we have let's say 4 and 4 4 3 times right so i want to find out this 5 how do i find this first of all i'm just going to write their binary form 0 1 and 2 and then 3 this is going to be 8 yes this is correct so if i write 5 and 4 so this is 0 1 2 and this is going to be like this right so these are the binary representations of these three numbers now if i create this particular frequency array so i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to traverse through the initial array and going to add the bits of each number in this particular array right so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so now what i do i traverse from the starting and I check what is this number, I calculate the bits that this number, particular number has. So this is 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. So its third bit is set, so I am just going to mark, increment this frequency by 1. Now I come to the next number, again the third bit is set, so I am going to increment the frequency by 2. Now I come to this particular number, again the third bit is set, so I am finally going to update this particular frequency to a 3. Right, now I come on to 5. So this 5, the 0th and the second bit is set, so I am going to update this frequency by 1. Now I move on to the next element, we have 4 here, so the second bit is set, so I have to update this frequency to 2, right. Now again the next 4, this, this next 4, then we have to update its frequency to 3, so we add 4 here and now we have 3 here. Now I come on to this particular 4, so I have to update its frequency to 4, right. So each time I am encountering an element, I am updating the frequency of all the bits that is present in that particular element. Now at the end what I just have to do is, I have to traverse the array and take only those bits which in which the frequency is not divisible by 3. So here it is not divisible by 3, here it is not divisible by 3. This is 0 bit and second bit, if I find the number that would be 5, right. So this, is, this was the whole idea of this particular problem and uh, let me show you the code so now that you understand the implementation better. So what I have essentially done is, I have initially created a vector of frequency of size 32. And I'm just going to go through all the array elements and going through all the bits. So I'm going to increment this particular f of j if this expression returns true. So if I write plus is equal to some Boolean expression or some logical expression, it is going to like uh, add 1 or 0 to my answer. Right. So I do array of i right shift j. Right. So that means basically if I have any number, let's say 101 only. So this is 0, 1, 2. 1 and 2 right I want to find out whether the second bit is set or not what I am going to do is I am going to right shift this particular uh, number twice so if I right shift it twice it is going to become 0 0 1 right now if I take its bitwise and whether one now these elements are 0 this element will be 1 now depending upon whether this element is 0 or 1 my final answer will be either 0 or 1 right these are the only two possible values if this is 1, the answer is going to be 1. If this is 0, that means 0, 0, 0 or maybe or maybe even some values to the left. So let's say it can also be like this and then we have 0 here. But these values will always be 0 and then we have a 1 here, right. So this is anyways going to be 0. For this particular value, this is 1. Now the answer depends on this particular value. So if this is also 0, the final answer is going to be 0, right. So basically, if the frequency is odd or if that particular bit is present, that, that is when my expression is going to return 1. If that particular bit is absent, that means my answer is going to return 0. This is how I can calculate whether this the bit is present or not with this particular expression and if it is present, I am just going to add 1 to my f of j, right. Now I initialize my answer with 0 and I am just going to go through all the 32 bits. So if f of i mod 3, so you see what I am doing here is if f of i mod 3, this expression is going to return 1. 1 or 0, right, because either we were adding multiples of 3 to each bit, right, so it will be 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on, either or there was only one element with frequency 1, right, so in one of the bits, it might be like 
uh, okay we have a multiple of 12 then we add one more bit to it so it will be 13 so this expression f of i mod 3 with either be 0 or 1 right if it is a multiple of 0 if it is a multiple of 3 then this expression will be 0 so 0 left shift anything will be 0 itself so i don't need i don't need to worry about it whenever this expression is 1 and it the f of i is not a multiple of 3 that is when i will do one left shift i so you see i'm avoiding a couple of if else conditions the expressions the way i write the expressions always take care of themselves so this is going to add one left shift i only when f of i is not divisible by 3 right you could have also written it like if f of i mod 3 is equal to is equal to 1 or it is not equal to 0 only then i'm going to add one left shift i to my answer right so this is how you could solve this problem at the end you can just return your answer value so this was all about this particular problem let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye.